representó un gran avance para la humanidad. Capitalism represents a big step forward for humanity if compared with the previous system of production. You remember how Columbus arrived to America? He arrived in a sailing ship. At that time, galleys were used. Those large ships were filled with slaves that rode the boats. Just imagine, compare that with today's cruisers. How did people travel in the distant past when they did it on foot? They did it on foot, by animal, by cart. And today we have high-speed airplanes and trains, which shows the enormous technological development that capitalism has brought out. And what about the way clothes were produced in the distant past and now? We can mention also all the well-being, comfort, and so on, which have surfaced with the unfolding of capitalism. But what has all of this systems development been translated into? Has poverty disappeared? Are the people who are governed by the capitalist system richer? Do people live better? You should know that in the United States, the richest countries in the world, there is a lot of poverty. Poverty has not been eliminated. In fact, in cities like New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, hundreds of thousands of people are homeless. There is poverty in the midst of wealth. The capitalist society in which we live has too much injustice and inequalities. There is a small portion of very rich people and a huge amount of people who have barely the minimum to live. This is especially true in poor countries. That is why, although some of you already heard this from me in another talk, I would like to repeat here what Álvaro García Lineda, the Bolivian Vice President, explained to the people of Bolivia when he wanted to tell them why they were fighting for a different society. Every year, 11 million children in the world die from malnutrition, for lack of medical attention, because they don't have the support needed to cure minor curable illnesses. It is as if the whole of Bolivia's population died every year. Just imagine what that meant to the people listening to him in Bolivia. It is so illuminated, isn't it? Álvaro García Linera also said, every night, 800 million people around the world go to bed with the sensation of hunger, and 2 billion people have no basic services. But not only human beings, nature is also destroyed by the system. Thousands of species of animals and plants have been wiped out in the world in these 400 or 500 years of capitalist development. Forests are shrinking, and the ozone layer has been depleted. You know, all about the subject of cancer, this radiation that people receive when they get sunrise directly without the protection of the ozone layer. Our mountains, which used to be snow-capped, are disappearing. Glaciers, have you seen how this world's water reserve is melting? It is being said that in the future we are going to face a shortage of water. All the things happen within the system. Nature and so many people are difficult in surviving. But on the other hand, capitalism produces great wealth, great knowledge. The problem of the entire humanity could be solved by it. If this is such a possibility, why then are these problems not resolved? Because the wealth is accumulated by a few. I don't know if you are familiar with some studies about the richest families in the world and about the transnational corporations, which sometimes have more wealth than an entire country. The capitalist system is irrational and unfair. For example, to have things you have to go buy them at the market, and for that you need money. Then it turns out that on one hand, large quantities of products are produced, and on the other hand, the people do not have enough money to buy them. And so there comes a point when the shops are filled with things and people don't buy. These are the so-called crises of capitalism. 
Today we are experiencing one of the crises of capitalism, the third major global crisis of this system. Why do these crises occur? Because you are paid little, or you are unemployed, or you are so much indebted as you pay for your housing costs that you don't have money left to, to buy other things. In this situation, the first thing that people do is to reduce expenditures or on non-necessities. For example, going to restaurants. In time of crisis, people do not go to restaurants which are considered luxury. Another of the contradictions of the systems is that while extravagant things are produced, people's needs are not fulfilled. Capitalism is a system that is based on profit and not on meeting the needs of people. It is irrational and unfair that entire crops are destroyed to increase the price of these products because when there is scarcity, prices rise. In Brazil, for example, there is a historical that data on how coffee crops were destroyed to raise the price of coffee. In the United States, the milk extracted from the animals was thrown in the rivers to get it, its price to rise. And how many times fruit is left to rot in the trees so that the fruit that is harvested will have a higher price? But on, not only this, it is a, also a system in which war is something fully functional within the system. Capitalism wages wars to seize raw materials. They invade countries, subdue the people of other countries, and cause coup d'etat to put in place rulers who will help the great power to obtain the raw material, usually from the third world countries. This is what happened with Iraq and with Libya recently. But capitalism needs war not only to obtain raw materials, Wars are important to capitalism because they stimulate the war industry. Guns and bullets are needed for making war. Ships and planes are needed to move the troop. Thousands of things are needed. In times of economical crisis, the war industry helps to resolve the crisis. And what does war mean? Massacres, destroyed homes, disvasted towns, horrible things, right? Not only do soldiers suffer, but so does the civilian people that is completely innocent and that has no responsibility. War destroys schools, hospitals, roads. War is very useful for capitalists. The more infrastructure, roads, schools are destroyed, the more business capitalists have to rebuild that destroyed road and schools.